I'm Dr. Tom DeStefani. We're here in the Normal Newborn Nursery of the Ronald McDonald Children's Hospital of Loyola. And what we're going to do today is demonstrate a basic screening physical exam on a normal newborn. We'll try to elaborate on the appropriate sequence of the physical exam steps, which as you remember from your physical diagnosis course are recorded in the same order when you write up your physical exam, but are not necessarily performed in that order for the comfort and safety of the baby. We'll highlight the performance of the individual steps and while on the video this may take a little bit longer, in real life this whole exam would take about 10 minutes. Things we'll not do today are calculate APGAR scores, assess gestational age, or measure and interpret vital signs. Typically when we begin the physical exam in the normal newborn nursery, we might be seeing babies in an infant warmer like this, or conceivably in their bassinet. Either way, we would tend to want to prepare uh, for our exam as best as we can so we can get through this quickly and efficiently. That would entail taking a look through the chart so that we'd be clued in to what specific things we might want to look for on our physical exam with respect to history. We also would want to know growth data and vital signs that might also focus our exam a little bit more carefully. We want to make sure we have an otoscope and a thalmoscope, as well as uh, some otoscopic specula and a tongue blade and a stethoscope. With respect to your stethoscope, uh, for those of you who are not necessarily going into pediatrics, we want to make sure that we have a pediatric head for our stethoscope. Uh, anything too large is not going to be panning out very well to listen to the heart and lungs. So after reviewing the history, washing our hands, and preparing our equipment, including some extra diapers and washcloths in case we get involved in any cleanup, we are ready to begin. The first thing we'll do is some general observation, looking at the baby's posture. This is a full-term baby exhibiting very normal posture with symmetric flexion of the arms and legs. Her hands are open, which is generally a good sign. Infants who are hypertonic would be more flexed and with clenched fists. Normal babies may clench their fists periodically, but should have some time with open hands. A hypotonic patient, on the other hand, would look more flaccid than this baby. Next, we'll observe her skin color, which in this baby is nice and pink. In some patients, you might instead find cyanosis, readiness, or pallor. As we continue to observe her, we'll also look at respiratory effort. She's not demonstrating any tachypnea or accessory muscle use. Infants with cardiorespiratory problems will frequently show significant intercostal and substernal retractions, along with nasal flaring and grunting. This baby is demonstrating some abdominal breathing, which is normal for newborns. We're also observing her for any abnormal movements such as lip smacking, eye fluttering, bicycling, or tremors. Occasional tremors or twitching are not uncommon in newborns, However, if these are persistent, that would be of concern. Again, getting back to observing her skin in addition to color, we're also going to look for areas of abnormal pigmentation. And to do that, we have to actually look the baby over from head to toe. We're going to try to do that since she's nice and comfortable right now without disturbing her. So we're looking for any kind of skin lesions or abnormal pigmentation. Uh, again, we don't see any papules or uh, uh, vesicles any place. Um, no unusual areas of pigmentation on the front. We'll turn her over carefully, again, without trying to disturb her too much. And on the back, we're looking for any kind of Mongolian spots, which typically are concentrated in the lower sacral area, um, or any kind of nevuses or, uh, uh, or other skin lesions, none of which she has. She does have a wound on her heel from getting her no normal uh, metabolic screen today. Um, and uh, so she has a little bandage on uh, both heels from getting her blood drawn this morning. Next, we're going to kind of move to the chest. And uh, uh, looking at appearance, uh, what we're going to do, since she's nice and quiet, again, re-examine with respect to any asymmetry with her chest. Does she have a pectus excavatum or a pectus carinatum, pigeon-breasted or kind of caved-in chest? Her chest is nice and normal. Are her nipples normally spaced? There are standards in textbooks that you can do if you have a concern, but hers look generally OK at the present time. Does she have any excessive breast tissue? Even male infants can have some breast tissue from the estrogen stimulation they get in the womb. Um, she has some breast budding here, but nothing in terms of extensive breast tissue. Sometimes you'll even see some uh, milk discharge from the nipples at this age, which would be normal. Uh, you also may see a xiphoid process. Her xiphoid process would be under her temp probe at the present time, uh, but it was not visible before we put the temp probe on. Again, we're sort of assessing respiratory effort. She still has no accessory muscle use. And we're also going to look and see if there's any uh, hyperdynamic precordium. Are there any extra impulses that we can see on the chest uh, before we go any further? Uh, that said, everything looks good. And so we're going to go ahead and listen and auscultate the lungs. 
We're going to look sort of high and low, left and right, front and back as we try to listen. And I'm going to use my diaphragm for my uh, lung auscultation. We're going to start on the left side, sort of near the heart. So while I am here in heartbeat, I'm focusing on the 